Hey everybody, what's going on? Uh, give me one second here. I'm just going to uh, be coloring this Viking live today. Um, I've already gotten started, but uh, let me just just getting things set up. Probably about 15 seconds here. Where's my glove? All right, cool. Uh, all right, thanks everybody for watching. Um, I'm gonna be coloring this thing in Clip Studio Paint today. Um, this is a project I'm working on for a client. They are a wrestling apparel company. Um, so if you'll look here, uh, I have a mask that's turned off. So this will actually be the garment. Um, it's like a wrestling singlet right here, but I'm gonna color the whole thing just in case we need to use more of that later on and like most of the things I color I like to start in Photoshop because I, I feel like Photoshop has a kind of finer control over the colors so what I've done is I've just sort of blocked in the colors in Photoshop and taken it over into Clip Studio Paint so I can start making strokes and, and adding the details so what I'm gonna do here is set this up as a reference layer all right, I'll get started. So I'm uh, broadcasting to Facebook and YouTube. If anybody has any questions, um, just leave it in the comments, and I'd be happy to happy to answer. I got a new microphone too. It's like uh, it's called this Blue or the Snowball by Blue. Um, hopefully, I was having some audio issues. Hopefully, those have been fixed now. So, if anybody has any comments on how my voice sounds, let me know because I'm still messing around with all the settings. But keep it friendly. So, what I like to do first uh, is go in and just sort of do the midtone shadows everywhere which is just sort of like hugging all the line art pretty much. Hey, whoop the freaking do and uh, blackity. <laughs> uh, how's it going? Thanks for thanks for joining. Let me know if you guys have any questions. Uh, something really cool happened to me this week. I uh, I made the cover of Gnarly Magazine. I don't know if anyone's familiar with that magazine or not, but it's it's really cool. It's got a lot of great like hot rod and skateboard and tattoo artwork in it. Um, and I had submitted some of my artwork to, uh, I can't remember the guy's name, but the guy who runs the magazine sent, sent my artwork to him. And I knew it was going to get in the magazine, but I had no idea that they were going to put me on the cover too which is super flattering and 
and just made my week. It's awesome. Um, that kind of stuff doesn't happen to me real often, so it's just really, really cool when it does, and it just kind of, I don't know, it just it's something that just says, like, okay, man, just keep going. Uh, yeah, I think you're on to something. You need one of those every once in a while in this business. Hey, Mark Dilworth asking what kind of computer I'm using. Um, I I'm not I am using a Mac. I'm not like a one of those rabid Mac fanboys, I guess, but every time I go to get a new computer, I always pick a Mac just because uh, the the thing I love about this machine is that it's so dependable. Um, it I've had it for uh, many years and the one before that I had for many, many years and like it never really it never got viruses. Uh, it never even really had any like any problems at all. I, I remember when I was using Windows a lot and maybe things have gotten better, I don't know. But when I was using Windows a lot, there would be some times where I would spend a whole day just trying to, to fix things. Um, and when you're a freelancer, you just can't afford to lose a day like that, you know. Um, of course, they're incredibly expensive. Uh, the computer I'm using, I think, was like ended up being three grand. So you can probably get a pretty amazing PC for for probably two grand or something. Um, I always think about looking into that, but every time I make the choice, I just I stick with Mac. I think just it's what I'm used to. Um, I really like the operating system, um, and I love the monitor. That's the other thing. Uh, so I'm using the iMac, um, the 2015 edition, and the monitor that's built in is like just super accurate. Uh, I n almost never run into surprises with colors printing differently than, than I was expecting, you know, um, and that's a big deal. So if I bought, let's say I bought a $2,000 PC, I probably would still have to go and buy a, a $1,000 um, like really awesome monitor from Dell they make good monitors um, so that's just kind of the way I look at it like it is a lot of money but I feel like I'm getting a really good fast dependable computer and like a top-of-the-line monitor in, in one right um, but but anyway that's what I'm using if you want um, I have more specific specs on all the tools that I use uh, if you go to my website, there's a page, um, there's a f uh, frequently asked questions section. And uh, if you go there, it's got everything. It's got all the uh, drawing tablets and computer specs and, and what whatever. The brushes I use and all that stuff, if you're interested. So sometimes I use a more like comic book style of coloring where you know you get the lasso tool out and you uh, you throw um, you cut out shapes and then you throw a soft brush over it uh, but with this piece since it's going to be printed uh, on a wrestling singlet I want to use um, I just want to like ink in the details like this so they'll be really sharp and because uh, if I use a soft brush a lot I think a lot of the those uh, brush strokes are actually just going to get lost when it gets printed anyway. That's something I've learned when working with this kind of material. Hey Randy, what's up man? Yeah, right, this stuff is not... What, Randy, what kind of... Uh, what computer are you using? Um... To answer, uh, sorry, I can't pronounce your name, but there's a question here about is this artwork going to be screen printed? And no, um, this is going to be uh, dye sublimated, so it's going to be full color and printed so that it wraps around the whole uh, the whole area. It's really cool, and um, 
I've worked with this company before, and they, they do an amazing job. It's really cool. But I love working this way because it, it can be such a pain in the neck to plan for silkscreen, you know. So it's fun to sometimes not have to do that. Randy, so you're saying you got an HP uh, computer. Um, I remember you saying you had problems with it. Have you have you figured those things out? Yeah, so there's a comment here where it says three grand Mac equals 1,000 grand PC. I don't want to get into one of those arguments, but but the thing is, I don't I don't know. I like I was just saying, you also get a monitor that um, you know a monitor of this quality that's that color accurate and uh, that sharp. Like it's going to cost you a grand. That uh, I think Dell makes the only one that's comparable. Um, as far as a thousand dollar PC being able to keep up with this machine, I don't know. Uh, I remember when I was trying to build it, I did try to build a PC as well. And just by the time I priced it out, um, you know, like the machine I'm using has 32 gigs of RAM um, and uh, it's got a high quality graphics card, all that, all that stuff. Uh, by the time you add all that, uh, you're well above a thousand bucks. I mean, the thousand bucks is, that's the base model, you know. You could probably get a $2,000 PC that is comparable, um, but then you, but then you're going you're going back to Windows, which um, which I said like I'm just I'm just used to this, you know, it just works. So um, once you find something that works, like it's it's hard really to want to take a risk to disrupt that. So anyway, not saying I'm against it. I, every time I buy a new computer, I, I research it again. And that'll probably happen in like two years, maybe. Hey, Salty, thanks. So you like the, the Fat Maru brush? Is that your favorite? Is that what you're saying? Randy, that sucks about your machine, man. I it's nothing worse than that because it's like, obviously it costs a lot of money, but all the time that you spend trying to fix a computer when you got deadlines and stuff, I I know how that is. That's that sucks. What did you end up getting? It is that that uh, the HP Omen? Is that the one you have now? All right, I'm looking for a soft brush here. Where the heck is it? I have so many brushes, but just because since I make them, I kind of have all the sets here, but I only use maybe like 10%.
Um, if anybody is interested, I've got, uh, I think I talked about this last time. Um, I just released most of my Manga Studio brushes for Photoshop. Um, I went in, people have been asking me for a long time, you know, do these brushes work in Photoshop? And, you know, of course, no, they don't. Uh, so I went and one by one uh, imported them into Photoshop and changed the settings the best I could so that they worked as close to my uh, Manga Studio brushes as, as possible. Um, the thing is, as you know, like the brush engine between Photoshop and Manga Studio is totally different. So there are a lot of brushes that just um, were impossible, you know. So, uh, but I got most of them. Um, so the Eclipse Studio paint set is like 200 brushes maybe so I was able to get a hundred of those brushes to work in Photoshop um, if anybody uses Photoshop and, and you're interested I've got them uh, on sale on my website um, for six bucks and if you like them let me know what you think because they're really new I just uploaded them uh, last week so if you find if you get them and you find any problems, uh, I definitely would like to know about it uh, as soon as possible. Simon uh, asking me, "Where's the iPad?" Uh, iPad's right behind me. Um, so I've actually I've been getting really I'm really happy with the iPad the way it's going. Uh, the thing is, hands down, this device here, the Wacom, is still so much better for me at drawing real projects. So, so far, the only thing I've really been able to use the, uh, the iPad for um, is doing some inking. So, like in the evenings, maybe I'll ink on the couch if I'm behind in work or if I'm, I'm working on my own artwork. Uh, and that's fine. Um, you know that does save me a lot of time so so right there to me it's paid for itself um, doing something like this with the color uh, to me would just be crazy on the iPad because w you can't really see what I'm doing right now um, coloring this thing but I have my little keypad here and to me coloring um, you really gotta zoom far in and then you need all kinds of keyboard shortcuts to do things quickly. So that's just not the iPad's thing. You know, the iPad is really more about um, sketching things quickly and, and, and whatnot. Um, so I've tried it. I've tried to color things uh, on the iPad and I'll, I'll work at it for about 20 minutes and then just give up and come back to this, to this guy because I'm just too used to it. But I'm anxiously waiting for the the new Wacom uh, Cintiq Pro, the big one, the the 24 inch. Not the I can't get the 32 inch because I, I gotta put my kids through college uh, eventually. But super excited about it because I've had this guy, the 24 inch, for about seven years, um, and it's still working great. It's but it's got a couple hiccups. Uh, where every once in a while I'll have to turn it on and turn it back off or turn it on turn it off and then back on again um, just because the it's weird the line gets wobbly um, I don't even know it probably won't even happen while we're working here but it's just like sometimes especially if I leave the room for a little bit it'll happen I don't know if it's just like my wife coming in here and fucking with me I don't know Yeah, Randy, you getting the 32 inch, buddy? I, we talked about this before. I just think, like, the 32 inch just. Because I got a TV in here that's 32 inches. And it just. To put that thing on your desk and just staring into it with your face 8 inches above it. I don't know, man. It's just crazy. It just seems like you'd burn your retinas out.
Someone here is saying they're still using the 21 uh, UX version. Um, I might have had that. Uh, is that the one? Is that one of the first Cintiqs? I don't know. How long have you had that? That's one thing I'll say about Wacom. Like, they, yeah, obviously they are extremely expensive, uh, the most expensive. But these things work. Um, you know, I've. The only problems that you ever have usually are with the drivers, and uh, they're, those problems are usually fixed pretty quickly. And uh, the best way to avoid that is just if you, if Wacom tells you to update, just don't. You know, just I, I put that off as long as possible because um, you kind of need all the other, you know, Photoshop and whatever to catch up. Um, Something tell somebody's not playing nice with somebody. I don't know if it's Wacom's fault or Adobe's fault. I don't know. But sometimes there are issues. Now this color I'm putting in the beard is like way too sharp down here, but what I'm doing, I like to draw just in a solid color on another layer, and then I'm gonna go back in and erase it in certain parts. Uh, it's a lot quicker than constantly like changing the color to match a certain area. Try to bring in some blue here. Yeah, I have a comment here from someone saying they're going to try the Huion uh, or the XP pen. Um, I'd love to try one of those because uh, I know that uh, I keep hearing that name that it's actually a pretty decent Wacom alternative. Um, there are some out there that I think are not created equal. Like uh, There's some where there's just so many driver issues that... Uh, it seems pretty risky.
Yeah, if nobody's got uh, any questions, um, I wanted to chat about something that uh, I was having this discussion the other day with an artist friend of mine, um, and I thought it might bear repeating. So we were talking about should you actually publicize your prices on your website, uh, and I I think no, um, and this artist was publicizing like not their full price list but more of a minimum you know saying hey this is how much a t-shirt starts at this is how much a logo starts at etc um, he's a successful guy too so I'm not trying to not I'm not trying to say the way he's doing it is wrong of course um, but I I did that for a while and uh, it didn't it didn't work out for me. It actually worked out better when I stopped publicizing my prices. So, and here, so here's why. Here's why I don't think it's a good idea. Um, there's a couple reasons. One uh, is that let's just say I'm going to use the number five hundred dollars just as an example. Um, prices can range all over the place. You know, you you might charge two hundred. You might charge two thousand. I don't know, but let's just use five hundred. If you say on your website, okay, right now I'm only taking projects at $500. This does two things. It's going to mean that anybody um, who doesn't have $500 is not going to contact you. And it means also that on the other end, if somebody has a budget, uh, let's say it's a big ad agency and they have a project uh, that's like a $10,000 project. They might see that $500 and think, you know, this guy's work is really good, but uh, if he's only doing stuff for 500, uh, you know, maybe he's not, maybe he's not the guy we wanna hire for this uh, $10,000 job. Or the other thing that can happen, um, uh, oh yeah, yeah, so let me take a step back. So. Let's do it one at a time. The uh, $500 guy. You might get somebody who has $400. And he looks at that and he says, you know what? This guy says it has to be $500, so I won't contact him. I'll contact this other guy. Well, maybe the thing he wanted was actually pretty small. You know, maybe the thing he wanted could take you an afternoon. Maybe the thing he wanted, you could bundle it with Maybe he wanted 10 of those things, you know? Um, I think basically it's a lot better to just leave it kind of a mystery, have people contact you, and you can deal with each quote one by one. Now, what you're gonna get then, you're gonna get a lot of people who contact you uh, as we do with you know only $100 in their budget or, or less. I had a guy the other day ask, he wanted, uh, I think, 30 or no, yeah, I don't know, 30 t shirts for $30 a piece. You know, well, that's ridiculous. Um, so we had to waste our time talking to that guy, and that's a shame. But there have been so many times where somebody will contact us and they want uh, custom artwork, and maybe they only have $200. Well, instead of offering custom artwork what I do instead is I say okay well how about we take this thing here that I already made and I'll just license it to you you know you don't get it exclusively but I'll change the text and there you go you got some artwork that you already liked and uh, I get your two hundred dollars um, and then what can often happen is that two hundred dollar guy he might come back to you a year later, and now all of a sudden he has a real budget. You know, his business has gotten better, um, uh, or he just wants to license another thing for you for two hundred bucks. And um, that being able to convert those lower tier people um, has actually added up for us. Uh, and the beauty of it is, it doesn't really take any of uh, my time. You know, it doesn't take time to do any of the custom artwork. But if I had had a sign up on my website that says, "Hey, you know, you're not you're not welcome here," um, he just never would have bothered to contact us in the first place, you know. 
Um, it also prevents you from getting into situations where you can work out a deal, okay? Because uh, there have been some times where, um, like, let's just say, let's say I don't ever want to work for $500. Well, what if a guy comes and uh, I love the idea of the business, it's just fantastic. So maybe I can work out something with the guy. And sometimes we do, you know, sometimes we say, okay, I'll do it for this lower rate, but you gotta give me some promotion uh, or you have to give me X amount of products so I can sell them. Um, you know, there's lots of deals to be had, right? If you put up that you know, please go away if you don't have more than $500 sign in your front yard. You're never even going to have the opportunity to have that discussion, okay? So if we look at it from the other side, um, if you're telling people that your minimum is $500, then when a situation comes where, let's say it's a, it is a bigger client uh, or the project is a lot more um, uh, more demanding than your normal product or project and you say you know what that'll cost two thousand dollars well they're gonna look at that five hundred dollars and say wait a minute why are you charging me you know four times as much as what you charge regular people I think in that case it's so much better to have it be uh, not listed like you really don't want um, y y I don't know. You don't want to show your hand that early on, I guess. Um, the clients sure aren't going to show their hand. That hardly ever happens. So, okay, so the other reason that you don't want to share your prices up front um, is that nobody, none of us as freelancers should really be um, pricing like based on a price chart, you know. Uh, you know, this isn't this isn't a menu. Like we're not a restaurant, right? Your pricing should be based totally on your demand. So your prices can should fluctuate from month to month depending on how busy you are, uh, and definitely year to year. So if a client contacts you and they need uh, they need something, but you're already booked up, you you're pretty comfortable for the month you're gonna to wanna to raise your price a little bit. And you do that each time, just a little bit. And eventually, uh, that what you thought was kind of a raised higher price is now your normal price until you reach a time when you're not as busy, you know, and, and you can revise it down. Um, but obviously, base or pricing based on demand is, is a uh, pretty, should be an understandable concept for, for anybody. Um, that's how all markets are priced. So uh, there's really no reason that artists shouldn't try to do that as well. Um, and then the other reason too that you may not want to publicize your prices is uh, is competition. Uh, I mean, I, uh, I'm not talking about all you, anybody listening because you guys are my my friends, but artists who are not your friends or maybe just smart business people are going to want to compete with you um, and if you publicize your prices uh, it certainly makes it a lot easier to uh, I hate the word undercut but um, you can uh, very easily contact that artist's customers and just say hey you know I charge this much and it can be half as much or whatever um, now, you definitely want to talk to other artists about prices. You want to find out, uh, you know, get friendly with some artists and, and find out kind of what in general people are charging because you do need to know the market that you're in for sure. Um, but it's got to be like with people you trust. Um, so that's really important. So anyway, that was, uh, that was my thought on that. Uh, I think it's... Um, uh, well, I should say this. So I was said at the beginning, I used to have something up on my website that said, hey, I, uh, you know, I'm only accepting projects for blank, right? Uh, but I took that down because I, I was kind of suspicious of it causing problems. Um, and 
as soon as I did, we, we started receiving a lot more of those smaller ones, you know, the 200s, 300s, whatever. Uh, but probably like one out of every five of those, we were able to convert into something, you know, without, with very little effort um, and no, no custom artwork. And that started to add up. Um, and uh, the other thing that we were able to do is we were just able to raise our prices to a lot more based on each individual situation. So. Oh man, I missed a bunch of questions during that rant. Okay, so uh, there's a question here. Um, there's a bunch of them. Um, how did you manage to find transparency in the hotkey modifier settings? I'm trying to have a hotkey for it instead of manually changing it. I'll show you that in one second. It's real easy. Um, and then also when you're painting your inks after your flats, do you keep the rest of the painting on one layer? Um, I, I almost always paint kind of just on one layer. Um, the only time I don't is when I'm doing, I, you saw me do it earlier, where if I'm making marks that I know I'm going to edit or tweak, then I'll do it on another layer, but then merge it down. Uh, Cause I don't like, it can be, it can get real confusing for me real quick. Cause I'm not a real smart man. Um, if I have just hundreds of layers. So I like to keep it there. Um, I have the line art always on another layer. When I'm all done, there's usually just gonna be like maybe five layers. There's inks and colors and I keep the flats layer. Um, and then I usually have the background on a separate layer as well. Uh, so let me show you how to do this. So you just go to shortcut settings and it's in option and it's right here. Switch drawing color and transparent color. So I just set it to X. So whenever I press X, it switches back and forth between transparent and drawing. Hey Mel, how you doing? I hope you guys are doing good. Uh, Andres, uh, any book recommendations? Um, that's a good question. Uh, I, I have a whole shelf full of books that I just accumulated over time. Uh, but the thing is, is like, and this is, this is not good. Um, I just don't look at them. I just, I, I don't know. I just, uh, I don't have really the time or, or, or whatever. Um, what I mostly look at when I'm looking at reference or drawing tutorials and things like that is I just look on YouTube or uh, Google. You know, um, there's probably something bad about that though, because uh, a book, a whole book, gives you a lot more context that I'm probably missing. But that's just sort of the, just sort of the reality here. Um, so let me, let me real quick grab some of the books that I recommend. All right, um, let's see, can you see these? So anything, Anything by Hogarth is fantastic. These are all anatomy books, but um, I mean, this guy was the master, period. So anything by him, and they're probably fairly cheap now because they've been around for so long, but uh, just pick those up and, and draw from them and study them. Um, and this book is great. The DC, uh, DC Comics Guide to Digitally Drawing Comics by Freddie Williams. Um, Oh, no, wait, this isn't, no, this is a good book too, but this isn't what I meant to grab.
Oh man, sorry, I can't find the book. I, uh, there's a million of them there. But what it is, it's like the DC Guide to Inking. Um, man, I'm still trying to find it on my shelf. But, but anyway, I think if you just type in like DC Comics and Inking, it shows, uh, it's so good. It shows like so many different styles of inking and how to like achieve different moods and whatnot. Um, really recommend it. It's fantastic. Uh, other than that, I like to just kind of collect graphic novels and things um, and use, you know, just find images that inspire me and, and look at those closely and try to emulate them. I have lots of like art color theory books and everything like that and um, I'm sure they're very good but I just I sit down and I try to read them and it's just it becomes really hard for me it becomes hard for me to sit down and read about art uh, even though I love it I just um, I've never really been able to study it academically I guess you would say. Hey John, uh, how you doing, man? I I'm sorry, I just seen your name here. I, I remember I was supposed to call you this week. It's been it's been an insane week. Um, but I'm really interested in what you had to say. So let's uh, if we could definitely talk. Uh, or I, actually, when I'm done here today, I don't know if you're around. Um, I could give you a call. Sorry about that. Um, so you you ask a pretty flattering question, which I'd love to answer. Um, asking how do how do I get how do I draw great lighting? So I appreciate that, man, because I I feel like I don't, you know. Um, I feel like I struggle with that, but uh, I, I'm happy with the way this one is turning out. The so how you get good lighting. Um, is just to constantly uh, well I draw these big arrows while I'm inking to show where the light is coming from so you know I'll draw an arrow like this uh, like a three-dimensional arrow like kinda conical to show that I've got I'm gonna have a light from the moon kinda coming onto his back and then I know that I sorta have You're gonna sort of have like another light coming this way, like kind of a lower blue light or whatever. Um, and once you establish that, you just want to, of course, make sure that like all your shadows are on the opposite side of your strongest light, you know, and uh, make make those edges bolder. Um, I'm hardly a master of that, but if you if you just keep it as consistent as possible. Um, you can get away with a lot uh, and then here you know I only put these highlights on the upper part of his chest because you just kind of learn over time that this bottom area would be more in shadow and that you know just creates depth um, so uh, I wish you know maybe I ought to read some of those books because they probably would tell me a little more about how to achieve it how to achieve better lighting uh, but that's just sort of sort of the method I try to stick to. It's funny, I tried to choose a playlist that was like license free music and it's just playing Sonic the Hedgehog, uh, which uh, I don't have a problem with if you don't have a problem with it. But it's just, it's funny. <laughs> That's funny, John. Yeah, Andrea is asking, is this a huge Wacom you're using? Um, 
This is the Wacom 24 HD. If you want, on my website, there's a frequently asked questions section, and it shows all the tools that I use and you know their specs and all that, and where, where you can buy them, that kind of stuff. All right, so I'm I'm only gonna broadcast maybe for another 10 minutes. So at this point, I should probably take a step back and look at where I need to go next, right? Um, I like the beard. I think that's finished. I don't want to do anything more with the face. Um, I need to work on probably more of like a blue light, like a blue rim light around the edges of him um, from the lightning. Uh, this area down here is mostly going to be shadow, so I can just quickly do that. His hand needs to be finished. Um, this definitely needs rendering. And then the shield. So, pretty happy with the progress so far. This ship needs a lot of work because uh, right now it just looks unfinished and just kind of cartoonish. But um, I don't want to add too much detail because it's supposed to be far in the background. I think the colors are way too saturated. I think that's what's happening there. But uh, I can figure that out later. So um, that's a good question. Someone is asking, do I get any eye strain from looking at this all day, at the Wacom? Um, I, I don't when I'm wearing my glasses, but for some reason when I'm wearing my contacts, I can't for like more than an hour, I'll get a headache. Uh, I'm not sure what's going on there. Uh, but luckily I never have. Um, in fact, I think, I don't know, I, I think I get less eye strain than um, when I used to just look at a computer all day. Uh, and I, I don't know if it's just maybe it, it emits less light. I mean, it's definitely not as dark as, as the Wacom, I mean, the iMac screen for sure. Um, but so far, no problem. I'm actually a little worried about that, though, with the, the new Wacom tablets. Um, they're supposed to be super high res. Uh, and also, um, sorry, what am I trying to say? So there's super high res, but they're also like a lot brighter and can show a lot more colors. Uh, and that was one concern is like, what if it's so bright, it just burns my eyes out. Um, cause I found actually staring at the iPad for like two hours. Uh, I found that a little bit, uh, cause it's definitely, the resolution is so tiny uh, and that's good because you can fit a lot more on the screen but uh, I feel like my eyes strain a little bit uh oh it was a question in Spanish not prepared for that So Uncle Jimmy uh, is asking, what minimum CPU speed and RAM do you recommend? Um, I, I've pitched this a couple times, but I've got on my website a, uh, a frequently asked questions section with all, my, all the specs that I use and everything. So definitely check that out um, so that it can be broken down more specifically. But I think I'm no expert on this, but I'm, I'm using a 32 gig of RAM machine with like, I can't remember the processor. It's pretty fast though. Uh, I don't think the average person would need that. Maybe I don't even need it. But where I find it comes in handy is sometimes I'll work on things um, like recently I worked on something that was printed on the side of, uh, of a building, you know. So the file I was working with was like, was measured in feet, you know, and not inches. So it comes in handy when you're working at stuff that large. Um, I would think you'd at least need 16 gigs of RAM, I think. And uh, probably, I don't actually don't know processors to be honest. Sorry, I'm not real helpful with this. I'm not really a, a techie guy, I wouldn't say.
I guess the question to ask yourself is, you know, are you doing, is this going to be your hobby uh, or are you planning on doing it professionally? If you're doing it professionally, then um, get what you can afford because you want that machine to last a while, you know. Uh, so, and if you, you know, if you can afford it, try to finance it. If you, it, you know, there's so many options out there with like 0% financing. Um, because sometimes you can buy a really good machine and, and only end up paying like 150 bucks a month or something for for 18 months, you know. This Sonic the Hedgehog music is making me want to just freaking fly through this thing. All right, so what I should do here is is ink over the lines, over the inks here. here there we go. So, hey, Matthias, thanks for watching. Um, he's asking me, are these... Uh, are the is the artwork I do uh, vector in Manga Studio? So no, it's not vector. Um, Manga Studio has vector layers, but you cannot export it like as an Adobe Illustrator file. Um, so in this case, as I as I explained at the beginning of the video, this is a direct garment dye sublimation printing method. So they can print full color 100%. So there's no issue. They don't they don't need a vector. Um, you just want to make sure you're working at a really large size. Uh, this document um, is 200 DPI at full size, so I think it's I can't I can't remember how big, but let's just say it's maybe three feet tall. Because um, it's got a, I don't know how big is a wrestler. It's got to cover three quarters of a wrestler's body. So you do that math. Um, most of what I do uh, and, and most of the clients I work with don't require vector, which is great because I, I hate working in vector. Uh, but I will often, when I do logos, have to design it in vector just because usually a logo is more useful when it's in, in vector, especially for more professional clients. Yeah, see, check this out. This is, you probably missed this earlier, but see this wiggly line? You guys see that? Uh, this is the weird problem I was talking about with the Wacom. Um, it's just getting it's getting old. It's like seven years old, so sometimes I have to turn it off and turn it back on again. Not really a big deal, you know. So now it's fixed. Um, but I'll need to make sure that's clear if I go and sell this thing. So now I like to just go in and do a couple highlights. Um, I really like to keep my artwork looking still very hand drawn, you know. So I don't. I'm not really trying to achieve realism. Yeah, so Uncle Jimmy, some people in the comments, I hope you can see those comments, gave you some recommendations on uh, on a machine. So I, those seem like legit comments there. Hey, John, you, John Edwards, are you there? Do you want to hang out this weekend, buddy? Did your cat accidentally switch this on? All right, cool. Well, um, I'm gonna stop broadcasting in a second and then go finish this up. I probably have another half an hour into this, but I'm happy with how it turned out. I really wanted to do something that was less saturated than some of my other work, and uh, I think I was able to hold back and achieve that. Um, gotta do some more work in the ocean here, and then I gotta do the shield, but, uh, but I like it. So if anybody has any last questions, um, 
Uh, I'd really appreciate it. Uh, let's see. Just I'm sorry. I'm just scanning through the questions here. I probably missed some. I'm sorry about that. Uh, so I will try to look back through the comments later and see if I can answer. If I missed anything, go ahead and just put that in the comments section. Um, because sometimes when these, uh, here we go, when these live broadcasts end, sometimes the comments disappear. Um, all right, let's see if I didn't have my other one. All right, great. Well, thanks for watching. Uh, you know, please, uh, Put your questions in the comments. Uh, follow me on YouTube. Um, if you're interested in buying my custom brushes, I've got them on sale on my website. If you want to check out all the tools I use, there's a frequently asked questions section on my website too. And uh, that's it. Th have a good weekend. Thanks a lot.